How's it going, everybody? Last week, we talked about my list of the most interesting gliding animals from Earth's past. It was a lot of fun putting that video together, but there were also a lot of animals that I had to leave off the list. So much so that even though the official list was only five, two more animals got honorable mentions. I didn't actually include them because they were both close relatives of creatures that were already being talked about. But I felt like I needed to give a little bit of recognition to one of them because of how interesting and, quite frankly, bizarre it is. So this seems like an excellent opportunity for a Paleo Catalog Basics video. Ozamek is, even by Triassic animal standards, a very strange creature. But its discovery has helped shed light on this entire family of reptiles and where it probably fits within the complicated and confusing tree of life during that time. But before we get into that, here's Tim Tim with a disclaimer message. Ah, that's right. Well, I guess I'll do it. Just keep in mind that we don't have a lot of fossils of this thing. That's why this is a basics video, not a full paleo catalog. So yeah, if you watch this like five years from now and we've found fossils that prove anything that I'm saying now wrong, don't be a tool about it. Our understanding of the past is always changing. All right, but with that out of the way, let's get into the basics on Ozamek. It sounds like the name of a Star Wars character. This creature was first discovered in 2016, in a quarry in Poland. The mudstone was dated to around 230 million years ago. And as more and more fossils were found of this bizarre reptile, it quickly became apparent that this was a close relative of another Triassic weirdo that puzzled scientists for a long time. The freakishly designed Charovipteryx. After all, with limb proportions like these, it was hard to miss the family resemblance. And this was an important discovery because despite being first found in 1965, Charovipteryx is only known from a single specimen. And because of this, there was a ton that we didn't know about this creature. But scientists got a lot more lucky when they found Ozamek. Besides the holotype specimen, scientists found four articulated skeletons and 30 fragmentary skeletons. And that gave us a lot more understanding about this entire group. In fact, this animal's fossils are where we have the most evidence for it and Charovipteryx having wings on the front limbs as well. Ozamek is actually named after a town in Poland, near the quarry where the original specimen was found. And the species name Volens is Latin for flying. And despite the fact that we don't actually think that Ozamek was capable of powered flight, it may have directly competed with another more well-known group of flying reptiles that were evolving around the same time. The discovery of Ozamek was one of those finds that increases our understanding immensely. Not just of its physiology and the physiology of its relatives, but what in general life was like during this strange time. The Charovipteryx fossil alone was interesting, but it left a lot of gaps in our knowledge because for such a long time, that fossil was the only one of its kind. And as I mentioned last week, because of how it was preserved, it was impossible to tell if this animal had wings on its front limbs or not. And that would be the difference between it being an extremely efficient flyer or a very limited one. And although we don't know for sure if Charovipteryx had four wings, the fact that Ozamek did leads more scientists to more comfortably say that it did as well. But in other aspects of the way this animal was built, the fossils from Poland showed us that another long-standing theory about what these animals look like walking around was dispelled. One idea about its posture was that because it had longer hind limbs than front limbs, it may have walked around similarly to a dinosaur. In hindsight, it looks pretty ridiculous, but it just goes to show how wrong we can be sometimes when we only have one specimen to go on. The other feature that stands out about Ozamek compared to even its relative is its very long neck, and that was a clue to where we believe this bizarre animal fits into the complicated family tree of Triassic reptiles. It's now believed that Ozamek is related to the long-necked aquatic reptiles like Tanistrophius. Now to clarify, the most reasonable theory is not that one group is the ancestor of the other, but that an early, more basal member of this group, like Proterosaurus, may be a common ancestor between the aquatic Tanistrophius and the arboreal gliding specialist Ozamek. 
The Proterosaurs were one of the small handful of groups to survive the Permian mass extinction. After the Great Dying, pretty much all the specialist niches were left vacant. So it's not such a stretch to imagine that the Proterosaurs were inevitably going to radiate into taking advantage of different opportunities that became available as life started to recover from the greatest mass extinction that ever occurred. The evolution of the pterosaurs is a subject that we still know very little about. There are several different reptiles from the Middle Triassic that we think could be a missing link between them and other reptiles. Some more controversial theories have even speculated that this group of gliding reptiles eventually transitioned into true powered flight and at that point became pterosaurs. But scientists do agree that the first pterosaurs did appear around the Middle to Late Triassic. And when they did, it's thought that they quickly established themselves as the kings of the sky. After all, at that time, the only other true powered flying animals were insects. And with that, we come to one of the two possible theories as to the fate of Ozanek. Either it is the ancestor of what would eventually become the largest animals that have ever flown, or they were outcompeted by the ancestors to the largest animals that have ever flown. And considering one of those theories would require these creatures to completely reverse their limb proportions, I tend to lean towards the latter. Or who knows, they may have actually managed to live alongside the rising pterosaurs until the end of the Triassic, and then ended up dying out in that mass extinction. It's hard to say for sure, because even with more fossils of Ozamek than we have of Charovipteryx, there's still a lot of missing pieces to this puzzle. But what we do know is, so far as it stands, there is no fossil evidence to suggest that these hind limb gliding reptiles existed after the Triassic. In the end, as the world truly entered the age of the dinosaurs, it wasn't just the mammals that were forced out of their dominant roles. Several different reptile lineages lost out, and not necessarily from being beaten by the dinosaurs, or in this case the pterosaurs, but probably by the planet itself. It's impossible to say what was the deciding factor and whether this or this would be the template of flying vertebrates for the next 135 million years. But in the end, we would never see this rear wing design again, for whatever reason. I know why the hell died. Oh yeah? Why is that? I killed them. I Leroy Jenkins their asses. What? It's true. Anyway, I want to thank everyone for watching to this point in the video. And I also want to thank everyone who has recently subscribed to Paleoanalysis in the past couple of weeks. I recently got to experience what it's like to have a video get picked up by the algorithm for the very first time. And now our community has grown more than I could have ever expected. You are all the reason why I'm going to be able to keep doing this. So now I'm going to take a moment to talk to you all about a little bit of real life stuff going on with me. Two days after this video releases, I'm going to be moving cross country. It's been something that I've been working towards for a while, and I'm super excited to start this new chapter in my life. This is also going to open up a lot of opportunities for the channel, which is even cooler. I wanted to take a moment to say that I'm going to be trying everything I can to get moved in and set up to be able to keep recording content as quickly as possible. So I just wanted to make you all aware that there is a chance that I may not get to upload a video every week for the next couple of weeks. And once the dust settles on everything, the schedule that I upload might change too. I'm still going to shoot for roughly weekly uploads, but I picked Friday as my upload day based on my life and work and stuff like that. And as I said, all that is fixing to change. And also, I have a growing list of video ideas that I would love to do, but I've had to put on the back burner because I realistically can't make that video in seven days. So I don't know what the future will hold for this channel, especially over the next few weeks. But I will say that if you've liked what I've given you guys so far, stay tuned, because things are going to keep getting better. And I'll be sure to update everyone on any changes in the community tab. So turn on notifications so you can stay up to date. Alright everyone, I gotta finish packing. Have a good one everybody.